Right now on 13 News Weekend Edition, a body found at the marina in Guyandot. The latest on this investigation. Plus, as the death toll grows in Mexico, a 6.1 aftershock hits the country. More on the cleanup and this latest disaster. Working for you. 13 News Weekend Edition starts now. Good evening. We're following an investigation out of Cabell County after a fisherman spots human remains on the Guyandot boat ramp. The details are limited, but investigators did confirm that there were body parts found at the Guyandot boat ramp in Cabell County. We were on scene as officers continue their investigation today around the area. Huntington Police Chief Joe Ciccarelli tells 13 News that the body is going to the medical examiner's office for an autopsy where they hope to get more information about the identity of the remains. We also spoke to some people in the area and they said they don't feel unsafe in their community, but this is not the first time something like this has happened. I usually walk around this time every day, so. Has anything weird been happening around here? No, not for the last year or so. No, a couple years ago, they found a dead body over there by schooners, so. Again, we don't have a lot of details on this case, but we are hoping to get more on the identity and if foul play was involved when the autopsy is finished. Make sure to stay with 13 News as we bring you updates on this story. Kanawha County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a missing woman and her one month old child. Abigail Roop from Sissonville was last seen leaving her home last night around 1130 with her one month old child. Her parents thought she had a ride waiting outside when they saw her getting into a vehicle with the baby. They have tried to contact her numerous times and cannot reach her. Roop also did not show up for training at her workplace this morning. She told her mom she was going to a friend's house. However, that friend says she has not seen her. If anyone has any information, please call 911 or the Kanawha County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. A gorgeous Saturday in the capital city with temperatures in the 90s. This hot weather may continue. We'll see just how long. Meteorologist Eric Taylor is in the Storm Tracker 13 weather lab. Thank you, Eric. The death toll from the earthquake that hit Mexico this week has climbed to 307. More than half of those deaths were in Mexico City. Rescue efforts paused today as the country was rattled again by a magnitude 6.1 aftershock. Manuel Borjoquez is in Mexico City. A series of aftershocks south of Mexico City sent people once again running. At least 10 people are dead in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria ravaged the island. Pictures of damage and destruction just coming in, even though the storm made landfall Wednesday morning. Stopping along the road near Rio Grande, you can see the damage left by the storm. This is a stretch of many well-known hotels and resorts. All that took a hard hit from Maria. There's other damage to a gas station, power poles, and power lines. Much of the U.S. territory remains without power. Many of its residents right now are without clean and running water as well. Local EMS crews are finally returning home after being in Florida for over two weeks. The Kanawha County Ambulance Authority, along with other workers, have been helping out after Hurricane Irma damaged parts of Florida. Crews did everything from helping senior citizens and people with special needs, and we're glad that everyone made it home safely after their time in Florida. The state's first Parkinson's symposium was held today at the University of Charleston. Almost 200 people came out to hear local and national experts in the field of Parkinson's disease. They held a demonstration on how boxing could help this disease. Another big topic and tip they had for the group was exercise and remaining active. Exercise is, is very important for someone with Parkinson's. It can help alleviate some of the uh, physical problems, um, and people don't realize that. Um, they'll sit in their chair. As we say all the time, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it, especially with Parkinson's. You're back. The Charleston Parkinson's support group collaborated with Cabell Huntington Hospital, Marshall University Health, and Charleston Area Medical Center for today's conference. New tonight, Break the Silence Music Festival continued today in Grayson, Kentucky. The weekend of music and fellowship is dedicated to raise awareness of suicide within the youth community in the tri-state area. They also want to bring, light, bring to light ways to prevent these tragedies. Nine bands performed tonight and they also held fun activities like a dodgeball tournament and movies. The goal of this evening was to remind everyone that help is always needed and by providing support, anyone can prevent suicide and save lives. You just heard the Cabell Midland High School band who are participating in the Knights at the Roundtable contest. 23 bands from the Tri-State area were participating today at Cabell Midland High School. The winner of today's contest was the Russell Kentucky Marching Band. The Marshall Marching Thunder also performed at today's event, and our own chief meteorologist Spencer Atkins 
was the master of ceremonies there. Still ahead tonight, President Trump calling out the NFL, how other professional athletes are responding to his latest criticism. Plus, North Korea saying they have a hydrogen bomb ready to go. How the U.S. is responding to these latest threats when we come back.